Hello, and here's another episode of The Authentic You. And I'm here with Danielle, my special guest. And we're going to do a conversion of some of our tips for living your best life. So, hi. Um, Ashley asked me to join. And I decided to, and she wanted to come up with some ideas and I thought it would be fun if we each came up with our own list of things. And as we are sisters, um, I thought it would be really interesting to go back and forth and see what we thought was important to share with you um, because we are so incredibly different. Um, and so let's have fun. Do you wanna kick it off? All right, uh, we, could do, we could do one and one. Yeah, we're doing one and one. Okay, number one, find a, find something that that makes you happy like a happy zone and integrate it into your daily routine so for me that's going to the gym uh find some place that's peaceful for you or something or an activity it could be doing yoga at home it could be going to the gym it could be what do people do i don't know skateboarding pick something that makes you happy and that you don't that brings you peace and uh, incorporate that into your weekly schedule no matter what make time for it um as somebody who's lived with a partner pretty much my entire life except for right now that something for me is eating in bed <laughs> that brings me joy um my life hack or life tip is you don't have to hit like and subscribe so um this is like so I, I put it that way because everybody's so into hit like and subscribe wait that's and one of your tips things. that's one of yeah. your tips yeah but it's not about like it's like a like a generalization to like life not like actual oh, youtube stuff right. i'm saying in life you don't have to hit like and subscribe um which means anything trending anything going moving with the flow you don't have to you can go against the grain you can let your freak flag fly you can do whatever you want and um this one i think probably comes to everybody just with like time and wisdom and living life and living life that's not an authentic part of you and then when you do and you are living like your true self and following what makes you happy you feel really at harmony and like you're in the right place and i think we get pushed intensely like downstream in this subscribing to all of these things. Um, and you don't have to. So don't hit like, don't subscribe. Next. <laughs> except do hit like and do subscribe to my channel. Don't get <laughs> Oh, don't except get it. for this. Don't like get and it. subscribe. <laughs> except do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> all right. Well, actually, mine kind of is a follow up. Learn how to say no and set boundaries super important um a lot of times you don't even realize that you're kind of being pushed into doing something that maybe you're hesitant about because you're caught in the fun of something and it seems like it might, it might be a good idea it might work out sometimes it doesn't work out you just have to be like you don't even have to give a hard no you can be like let's let's like put this off into the near future or uh let's think about it a little longer some some choices are harder to get out of than other choices so slow down before you give yeses to people you don't have to be a yes man because then you're not really living for yourself agreed my second one is really important um ashley you're super into fitness you're super into nutrition i am as well um i would say that the happiest that I feel, and this is gonna totally be different for everybody, um, but I say eat a lot, move a lot. Um, the times of starving, dieting, whatever, are the most miserable times in my life that I can recount. Um, and it's simply, I mean, it's calorie in, calorie out. I think like I move so much now that I eat so much and I don't keep track of it. Um, and I just, my, my, wellness and health is like the best it's ever been like my boobs look good my butt looks good my body's not all jiggly because i'm eating and i'm moving and i think that um my body has every nutrient that it needs and it dumps the ones that it doesn't um but don't 
don't starve yourself. Um, just move more. And, and that just, you know, stress relieving and everything, but just get out and move. Um, people are less and less connected to their bodies. Um, and I have a puppy who's forced me to very much be connected with mine and I'm nutritionally the happiest I've ever been and feel the best about myself. And I'm the oldest I've ever been. So that's a good thing. Eat a lot, move a lot. Every day, you're always a little bit older than the day before and the oldest you've ever been. Um, yeah. Um, but that's like a, it's, like, it's an up, it's an up until it's like a down and I, st- I you know, I'm still, it's very slow. I'm, I'm it's doing all okay. Up, it's all up until you need diapers <laughs> again. Yes. Yeah, that's true. And even then I'm sure there's people partying out there with their diapers on. So, I mean, um, YOLO. Enjoy. <laughs> right. All right. Number three, keep momentum. So here's a great one. When you get done with high school, just go ahead and finish whatever, finish if you plan on going to college, a vocational program, keep the momentum. You have no idea how hard it is to get out of school and try to go back to school as an adult or some sort of training. And then you have a million bazillion more bills and more things that occupy your time and it's nearly impossible. So when your parents say to finish school, finish school. <laughs> but like I said, it can be a vocation. Yeah. It can be a training, a certificate. It doesn't have to be college. It, you can substitute that for whatever you want. But but keeping the momentum, oh my God, will make your life so much easier. I'll piggyback to that and just say, start now. Because there's been plenty of times where I've been like, I'll do that in the future. And had I just started then, I would have been done when the future came around, no matter how slow it was. So right. start now. Don't, so in don't five years, it'll off. still be five years from now, whether you did exactly. something. Exactly. And even if you had taken one, you know, one class every semester for five years, you would have, you would have been that much farther. So um, start now. Clearly we're the later sisters. <laughs> okay. Um, this one's, this one's a one I just recently just feel like is really important to me as I like watch the world around me. It's you don't own or control the spirits of others. That goes for your children, your friends, your family, your animals, anything that has a spirit around you, you don't own it and you don't get to control it. And the more you try, um, not only does the less likely it works out, um, but you also build a lot of resentment. So um, I think this one's important with like kids and animals because we feel like, because we have responsibility and ownership over their lives that we get to just tell them what to do um, and have them follow orders. But um, I think it's really awesome if you take some moments and they should listen to you. Those kids should listen to you. Those those animals, they they should be doing what they're supposed to be doing. But there are times when you can get on their level with how their brains are working and you can just tap in like crazy and um, experience their level and see what their spirit's like. And that's been a lot of fun um, to do with my dog because it's clearly a different, totally different species situation happening. And so sometimes I try to hunt with her and like do little weird dog things. And I end up having a really, really, really good time. So Don't try to control, don't try to own so much and keep that in mind when things are going real bad um, because there's true opportunities for connection you'll miss. You try to control things too much. Live and let live. Yeah. Also don't try to control your romantic partners because it creates pushback. Ooh, (laughs) sore subject. (laughs) All right. Um, Be selective who you try to have a family with. True that. It's not actually not even funny, but it is. Um, we're not, I'm just going to say this. We're not all equal. We all had the chance to be equal, but a lot of people are actually really big shitheads. Uh, so we're not all equal. I don't give a fuck. F. You too. Ooh. I don't care what you say. We're not all equal. So some people are just worthless and you probably want to figure that out before you start to try to have a family with them because they don't have very good values. Don't make babies with worthless people. Yeah. 
That is really good advice. Um, this one's really important. It might be a little bit more important than the one you just said. My tip number four is make your spaghetti sauce and your cupcakes the day before. Um, baked goods, spaghetti sauce, all those sugars need to just solidify, caramelize, melt together, and it's like magic. Like any true spaghetti sauce should be in that crock pot for like two days, just simmering. Wait, do you put sugar in your spaghetti sauce? Um, I mean, sugars just naturally happen from like tomatoes. Like some, some people you put can sugar in there because spaghetti. that because that's that's the cheating way of developing flavor when you don't have a couple days to spend on it. Oh. Because the developing so think about like I I watched this thing about tomato paste and they literally put like you know a whole bunch of pureed tomatoes on tables like the old fashioned way they slap it out and they leave it in the sun and that's how like you know it it develops like flavor so. If you're going to cheat, you use sugar or like cocoa powder or even like a tiny bit of instant coffee and you develop flavors that are supposed to be there from things simmering. So if you can and you have the forethought, make it a couple days. And the same goes with your cupcakes. They're so much better the next day. Like make them in the evening, let them sit, have the frosting ready, but frost them the next day. Sugars need to solidify. It's important. Um, I think some people put sugar to cut the acid. I mean, to I mean, of course, you're going to balance flavor, but who doesn't love sugar? I don't know. I'll I mean, take it in everything. It's delicious. And as for cupcakes, I don't make, I don't really bake. So I try and not eat sugar. Nor do I really baker. want to. So mm. some of us need it. Fair enough. I used to. All right. <laughs> Ah, this one kind of is kind of a two-parter. <sighs> so say no, say this is also this is a say no too, but um be careful how much you're willing to do for your job. Uh some people I'm sure have like super crazy, serious careers and stuff, and that's fine. A lot of us just have jobs. But, you know, I had, a, I had all kinds of jobs over the years and I'd always get forced to work Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, like every holiday I had to work it. And like, I'm not even, I've been gone from those jobs for like 10, 15 years now. It, what would it have mattered now if I had said no and spent and stayed home and like made it happen. So I got to take that holiday off. I don't know, I might have been fired. Do you think me being, I mean, worst case scenario, me being fired, would that be affecting me today? No, it doesn't even matter. Like I missed all kinds of holidays with my family because I had to work them. And I wish I would have, I wish I would have, uh, those jobs were not important and they're still not, they never were. And I missed that time to do things. Also, so kind of along the same lines, um, making time to do things over money you can make the money back. You can't get the time back. So schedule the vacation. Take the time off. Use your time off if you get it. Actually take time off and go do things. I agree. And most of the time, the jobs that are running you the hardest, you make the least amount of money. Um, yeah. Clearly service job industries, coffee, waitressing, restaurant, retail. Um, and I mean, I've worked lots of those jobs and most people just quit if they don't get the time off and they just find another job and probably those little jobs are never even on their resume. If you have the ability to work it, of course, work it. But otherwise, I agree. Take off. Bye. Bye. <laughs> um, okay. I said, um, I guess mine are all about being nice. Um, being nice. You know, but attract, yeah, attract your bees with honey. Like quit fighting so much in life. And one of these, like, like I'm all about bribing children. I will, I will bribe children and animals and even people sometimes to make things go smoother and it's fun and it's a win-win. And I, you know, all this power struggling kind of stuff is something I think that I did a lot when I was younger and it does work. It, it does. It's just so much harder than bribing your children. 
Um, and sometimes children are easy too, man. I can get like two gummy worms and um, get a lot out of my kid rather than yelling at them or something. So of course you're already in like a little tiff. There's nothing you can do about it. You got to stand your ground with your kids, but I try to bribe pretty, pretty early, pretty early on in the game. So I don't have to fight. And it's not like, you know, I'm getting taken advantage of either. That's not even what I'm talking about. It's just exchanges. Like things are just nicer and pleasanter when they're in exchange. So um, get some gummy worms and have your kids do some chores. So should we bribe romantic partners then as well? Absolutely. Um, it should be, a, you know, the older you get, the more you got to um, weasel it in a little, but absolutely. I've, I've done favors for things for sure. And gladly and nicely. And that's what I'm saying. Everybody wins. Like you want something, somebody else wants something. Like, why don't you guys both get what you want? Find, compromise or negotiate um, everywhere, all the time. All right, good one. Finally, don't ever make decisions solely based off of someone's word. It doesn't even matter if they're related to you. They're your best friend in the whole world. Uh, doesn't matter. People say a lot of things and then they change their minds. So if you line up a bunch of your decisions based off of what someone's literally just said and then things fall through, you're kind of still accountable for those results because you decided to trust them. Yeah, you are always accountable for your actions, regardless of how you got led into them, for sure, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Okay, well, my last one is being petty isn't pretty. Um, I think this is also one that's harder for, like, younger people, and I feel like, I mean, I've had a really, I guess mine are all about being nice, because I've had a really tough last year and a half, and I just... I can't, I can't go on struggling and fighting about things and I'm just trying to find peaceful ways to do stuff. But I would say, you know, being petty is just any, holding on to any little emotion that doesn't ultimately feel or serve, feel good or serve you. Because ultimately most of these things are about you. Um, other people just get to run away, go off, whatever. And they've got their own karmas, their own fates, their own destinies, their own things to answer to. And I always feel like it's coming to them. But when you get swept into that, all of a sudden you've got things coming to you. So don't be petty. It's not pretty. And holding on to anger, resentment, and other things like that really, really does lower who you are. And I think is like one of the biggest distractions in life um so it's not worth it let Don't it go be petty be sweaty how the hell is that relating <laughs> i don't know it rhymed. It rhymed. You just, okay yeah um yeah i mean get, okay get down to work don't be petty get sweaty um i know you've had a rough time too ashley it's like i don't know um a lot of that is just moving forward and not getting stuck. And that's really hard to do when your emotions are tied up into it. And so um, that I say are things I just repeat to myself a lot, a lot <laughs> in life. Daily affirmations. What is with it? John with? Stewart. What's John Stewart? Mm, is it? SNL. Oh, not John is it Stewart. John Stewart? It it's something, something. It's like, oh man, what's his name? Yeah, I, it's the SNL. Stewart skin. Smalley? No. Okay. You see my, my dog is fighting with me in the background. I can't remember his name. Yeah. I just, um, there's, there's, I mean, every day there's awesome, amazing things about your day, kind of no matter how shitty it is. And if there isn't, then you should be doing something for yourself. Um, whether that's like ordering a cheese pizza, like home alone or, um, getting yourself your favorite drink or I, I don't even know, going paint on a little your toenails. Walk, paint your toenails, eat a piece of chocolate, sit in the sun, have a cup of tea, like find one thing every single day and treat yourself. 
treat Joseph. So those are life tips. Of course, nothing there was like amazingly epiphany wise, probably for you, but I think you are what you eat in all regards, which means when you fill your mind with junk, you think junk. And when you fill your mind with education or positive things, then that's what you are. And so you should st stay in those places and stop watching all those Karen videos online. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I literally, during the work week, I I listened to like five hours of like motivational speaker stuff. And there's no way that you can, there's no way that you can listen to that much material and not hear the same concepts over and over again. But it's like wor worded differently and said by different people and has different examples. So it doesn't matter that I keep hearing it over and over again, because it's just taking up space in my brain with with positivity versus the other things that I might be sitting there thinking about and creating messes in my head all by myself. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. So, uh, I mean, my, my current job is literally like me motivating other people all day long, all the time. And for, to like help them realize their potential and help them with their problems. And it's easy to get bogged down. So like, you know, that's, I constantly have to like motivate myself. So I'm constantly eating good information all the time um and it works 100 percent. i think it works i even look up sometimes like stupid things like positive quotes best motivational quotes <laughs> and like you know i try helpful. to post i try to look something up in the morning and post like one 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 motivational thing in a morning yeah yeah and or the wake times, up, yeah the times that i wasn't I wasn't doing my regular stuff, listening to my stuff and doing all that or times or things were bad. It makes a huge difference. It does. I mean, really your reality, your world, your existence is all inside of your mind. There's definitely people that have the same circumstances or similar and literally just an attitude is the difference between fulfillment and, um, you know, falling into darkness. So stay in the light. All right. Well, it's been a good uh, meeting here and maybe we'll get to have you back as a guest for some fun times. Um, we have a really funny video, but it's not time to post it yet. So maybe later on this year, you'll get to see it. It's uh, from our from our uh, Reno trip. It's short. It's like three minutes, but it's funny. I would love also to see this evolve, which I think you would have a fun time with is people asking questions and you answering questions. Oh yeah, so, I did think of that. Like if people wrote yeah. in and stuff, it would just, this needs to be worked on for a while and, and to get momentum. Yeah. So right now it's pretty much just direct family and friends looking at it, which is fine. And- All right, sweet. Well, thanks for the invite. Um, subscribe and like, or don't. Or don't. Or don't. Or don't. <laughs> All right, bye Nick. All right, bye.